Hey guys, welcome back to Night Dangers and thank you for being here. So today I have an underwater diving disaster story that made national headlines. In 2013, a tragedy struck at Blue Springs State Park in Florida. Two friends faced a catastrophic event beneath the depths of the water. They both set off on their dive together but only one returned to the surface alive. It was a warm sunny Wednesday on October 9, 2013. Sam Slack from Edgewater and his friend and diving partner Daniel Van Sickle from New Smyrna Beach got in their car and set out for Blue Spring State Park. Both men had a decent amount of training in the sport and were well prepared with their diving gear, at least that's what they thought. However, Sam was still a novice. He didn't have a lot of experience in diving and also lacked the proper certification needed to dive below 60 feet, unlike his friend Daniel who had gotten an advanced open water certificate in New Smyrna Beach. So after driving for some time, they finally arrived at the entrance of the Blue Spring State Park on time just as they had planned. This park in Florida is a paradise for scuba divers. It offers a breathtaking underwater world that descends 120 feet into crystal clear water. It's like diving into a dreamland with winding rock formations and hidden passageways. But there's more to this park than meets the eye. First of all, it's beautiful. The more you explore this environment, the longer you want to be there. It also feels like stepping into a fantasy world as it's also home to a large population of gentle manatees. However, that doesn't mean jumping into the spring waters without a second thought is a good idea. Trust me, it is not. The park requires diving certifications for a reason. The Blue Springs underwater environment and its system of passages can be extremely dangerous. Although accidents are a little uncommon, they still do happen. So as a rule, all divers show proof of certifications before entering the water. And Sam and Daniel therefore left their certification cards on their dashboard of their parked car. I'm not sure why they didn't just hand it to the respective authorities but according to what I was able to find, that is normally how most divers provide their certifications. Anyway, like I said, Sam was not a pro diver. He in fact only had a novice open water diver card which only allowed him to enter the water with his gear but restricted him from diving deep. So both divers had to sign an agreement not to dive below 60 feet. I'm not sure how this agreement could help when it comes to actually preventing divers from diving any deeper. No one is watching them underwater. Any diver could go beyond 60 feet and no one would stop them. So it all depends on the diver and how much importance they put on their safety. So once they were done with signing the agreement and whatnot, Sam and Daniel began getting ready. They assembled their gear and made sure that both of them were 100% ready. Then they entered the water without any objections from park rangers or local authorities. The water was good, about 72 degrees Fahrenheit and despite the open space, the two friends intended to stick together to be more safe. Following the Florida State Park Service regulations, every diver must have a diving partner and remain together throughout the whole dive, which I think is great because diving alone is always dangerous no matter how skilled and experienced you may be as a diver. So Daniel and Sam are now descending gradually. Once they got to the 60 foot mark, they were supposed to stop, right? But well, they decided to change their plan a little bit. According to the investigation later carried out for this incident, Sam and Daniel had descended as deep as 116 feet, breaking their agreement. See, I kinda saw this coming when I first read about this story. If someone really wanted to plunge into the darkness surpassing 60, 70 or even 80 foot mark without any rational thought, a piece of paper wouldn't be able to stop them. And that's what's happening with these two friends here. They began carefully making their way below 60 feet. First, they got to 70 feet, next 80 feet, then 90 feet and eventually all the way down to 116 feet but luckily nothing bad happened, at least for now. After spending a little while at that depth, they turned around and began ascending which is when things went horrifyingly wrong. Something happens to Sam 
and at that point they were at a depth of 90 feet with their ascent. You see it all started when Sam tried to breathe in but no air came in. He tried once again but he just cannot seem to inhale any air. So quickly he made a distressing gesture to Daniel indicating that he was not receiving oxygen. This was petrifying for both of them. Sam tried a couple more times to breathe as hard as he could to at least get a little bit of air but still nothing. It's almost like all the air he had in his cylinder just vanished within seconds. Then he did what most humans would have done in this situation. He panicked. He started experiencing the true fear of death. Daniel got to him right away to see what he could do but he couldn't figure out the problem. I mean Sam was suffering without oxygen and it was all happening so fast. So Daniel was quick to take action. He decided to share his air cylinder with Sam. So the two then engaged in body breathing to share oxygen. Yeah, for a couple minutes they may be able to survive but they can only do that for so long and certainly they will not be able to make it to the surface that way. Daniel instantly realized that fact. So he had to make a decision. Either both of them die or one of them rushes to the surface to get some help which also does not sound very promising. But either way, Daniel knew something had to be done. He simply had no choice. He decided to swim up and do the only thing he could, get help. Despite his efforts to calm Sam down and get his regulator back to go get help, Sam refused to let go. He was terrified. Fear of death can make you do things that you would never have thought of doing. In desperation, Daniel snatched his own regulator back and swam up all the way up to the surface to call for help. Immediately before 3 p.m., emergency crews in Volusia County were alerted about the situation at Blue Springs Park. Personnel were quickly dispatched to the location. After getting the attention of a maintenance worker, Daniel dove back underwater and swam all the way down to where Sam was still located, about a hundred feet below. Given the circumstances, it all makes sense as to why he did that but it is also extremely risky as it could lead to decompression sickness. Swimming rapidly from a depth of 90 feet to the surface and then back down to 90 feet again is usually a bad idea. Divers usually make periodic stops during their ascent in order to avoid a condition called decompression sickness. This condition occurs when bubbles form in the body tissues and it can be extremely painful and even fatal in extreme cases. Despite the risks, Daniel didn't want to abandon his friend. He got to Sam so fast but when he got there he found Sam floating motionless in place. Without wasting any time, Daniel kept trying to rescue his friend. He inflated Sam's vest, providing enough flotation to bring Sam's motionless body up to the surface, but it was too late by that point. Paramedics arrived at the Blue Spring State Park and found both divers in need of immediate medical attention. Sam was unconscious and already gone and his death was later ruled as an accidental drowning. On the other hand, Daniel who was suffering from unbearable decompression sickness was rushed to a hospital in Orlando and placed in a hyperbaric chamber, a treatment used for extreme cases of decompression sickness. Meanwhile, investigators from Walusha County Sheriff's Office examined the equipment used that day, analyzed the dive records from divers' dive computers and questioned Daniel. They wanted to make sure that this was really an accident. However, it was later found that there was no foul play according to the sheriff's office and the investigators focused on the possibility of faulty equipment. Despite thorough inspections, no issues were found with the gear as well. Surprisingly, Sam's tank still had more than half of breathable air, which was weird but then the investigation revealed one clue that connected all the dots. The valve on the Sam's tank was not fully opened. This was such an abnormal thing to happen because 
it can create difficulties in breathing and this was one thing that all divers make sure to pay a lot of attention to. So this means Sam had made this grave mistake when he prepared his gear which is long before he even entered the water. Now that I think about it, he never really even got to learn about the actual problem. He had no idea what was happening to him. All he knew was that he had run out of oxygen when in reality, it was a quick fix. Turning the valve on fully would have been the solution. But well, either way, his fate was sealed the second he jumped into the spring waters that day. This incident shows the importance of proper training and certifications for divers. It may seem a little too pointless and not super fun to follow all the diving rules but they do exist for a reason. Sam lacked the proper training and to make it even worse, he became a little too overconfident in his own diving abilities. Unfortunately, that mistake led him to his own demise. And so with that, we have come to the end of this story. This was another diving tragedy that could have been avoided if proper safety precautions were not overlooked. What do you guys think about this disaster? I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Alright then, I'll see you guys soon with another story. Until then, stay safe out there and goodbye.